My name is H.J. Goodman, and I'm an author, columnist, and journalist, and I love President Trump. I love President Trump for what he did the past two days. This is the most important two days. Perhaps two of the most important days in U.S. history. And I'm not, this, that's not hyperbole. Hit subscribe right now. I love President Trump because he's bringing home Americans from conflict, from theaters of war, from military interventions we should never have engaged in to begin with. I love President Trump because he is reversing 16 years of failed U.S. foreign policy. He is reversing the mentality that we can go into another nation, dictate the terms of, of peace or you know, dictate their future to them. The United States does not have the ability to create peace or to impose peace through military interventions. Max Boot, even though he's written a whole bunch of books, lacks a basic understanding of world history. After Pearl Harbor, when we were attacked by the Japanese, two days after, or like a day or two days or so after, Germany and Hitler declared war on the United States of America. We entered World War II not because of, not because we wanted to initiate the end of, of Hitler's expansion and his gruesome and his barbarism, his, his heinous, the, the heinous atrocities he committed. We, we were forced into World War II. The notion that we could have stopped Hitler, yes, that is an appealing notion. Obviously, obviously, if you want to stop a madman from committing genocide and all of these things, you would want to do so. The problem is you can't, if you, if you don't have, if you're not a fortune teller, and if you, if you um, can't predict the future, then you don't know which military intervention is going to be in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria, in, or Vietnam. You don't know if you're going to have a failed intervention that leads to a counterinsurgency war where you're bogged down, where you're fighting in the middle of two opposing sides or three or four or five opposing sides, conflicting sides. Not everything can be related to World War II. Actually, most things, most military conflicts nowadays cannot be. If you look at the history of military conflict after World War II, you see a lot of counterinsurgency wars. You see great powers going into countries, whether it's the Soviets in Afghanistan or us in Vietnam or the United States in Iraq and Afghanistan going into country or Obama in Libya toppling dictators tr and then Obama said well it's my biggest mistake Libya what's Trump's biggest foreign policy mistake it's not destroying a country that later has um, slave auctions he's finally three minutes in he's bringing home soldiers from Afghanistan he's bringing home soldiers from Syria two days two of the most important days in American history he's reversing course the interventionists, the regime change war um, aficionados or quote-unquote experts or mongers or, or people who love, love, love the, the inadvertent atrocities and the, the, um, the uh, you know the phrase, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. These people are pseudo-intellectual. They might seem that you just watch Max Boot and Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson destroys him. He, a guy like Max Boot, a guy like the, the, uh, Bill Crystal, Bill Crystal and Robert Kagan were writing in the New York Times bombing Iraq isn't enough. Okay, when people say this was in 1999 or 98 or 99, this was before 2001. This was before everything. So. You're talking about, and just the other day, Bill Crystal was like, "Yeah, maybe we should engage in, in a slow, in a slow-moving regime change in China." 
they, it's like they've played Dungeons and Dragons when they were younger, and then they think that the lessons learned from a role playing game, a fantasy game, which is fun game, great game. I used to play it too when I was a kid. They think the lessons learned there can be applied to real life. But what happens is when you topple a dictator, you then basically you have to ensure that country doesn't devolve into chaos, bloodshed, mayhem, barbarism, which is what Obama allowed in, in, in Libya. Where are the people? So if, if President Trump, easily the greatest president of my lifetime, yes, I said it. Who's better than Trump? Obama. He destroyed Libya. Who's better than Trump? Bush got us into Iraq and Afghanistan, set the Middle East ablaze. H.W., okay, uh, went into Iraq, laid the groundwork for the colossal failures of Bush and Obama. You could say Reagan, in terms of foreign policy, he didn't send Americans anywhere. So that actually is better than Trump. But you look at an anti-war president. Who, is, who has been an anti-war president? Okay, Carter only was less of a military interventionist than Reagan, yeah, but he, what, a couple, what, 72, we left Vietnam. And so when Carter came into office, you had the specter of Vietnam. When Reagan was in office, you had the specter of Vietnam. So that kept military ambitions at bay. People were reluctant, foreign policy analysts were reluctant to simply impose America's will upon others saying, oh, well, you know what, if we can, we'll bring peace and pos prosperity through these military interventions. It doesn't work that way. It hasn't worked that way. ISIS was not created because of President Obama's withdrawal of Iraq, in, in, uh, withdrawal of some soldiers in Iraq. He kept soldiers in Iraq, and he increased, uh, he had a surge in Afghanistan. Obama's pulling back 7,000 Americans home. He's bringing home 7,000 Americans. In Syria, he's bringing, what, close to 4,000 Americans. So this is a great day. It's a great two days. Okay, it's a great two days. A top U.S. general said 4,000 American troops are in Syria. So he's bringing them home. We have 4,000 Americans in Syria. We have, we have what, over 10,000 in Afghanistan. We're bringing 7,000 home. This is good. If we can bring 11,000 Americans back home with their families, this is great. This is amazing. This is why I'm wearing the MAGA hat for this episode, this segment. This is why all the hypocrites on the left, you realize there are people who don't like Trump simply because of mean tweets, and they'll ignore peace between North and South Korea. Look at, what, look at the foreign policy achievements. Peace between North and South Korea. The rebuttal is, well, it's not, it's not peace. Yeah, there's the beginning, though. The beginning stages of peace. It's pretty good. The beginning stages of peace are all you need to know. The beginning stages, you have to commence. You have to commence peace between North and South Korea. You have to, or it has to commence. I love Trump because he's going up against an establishment that loves military conflict, loves it. And when people are too stupid to realize how I went from Bernie to Trump... Because the reason I loved Bernie, I wrote over 100 articles. The main reason is because he was against Clinton's foreign policy. And I explained this over and over and over again. And nobody, not, not that I'm like this figure that people around the world knows. Nobody really knows who I am. But if you're really, really interested in either Bernie Sanders or politics, you might know who I am. And I explained over and over again to people, the reason I'm, I went from Bernie to Trump is because of this anti-war foreign policy. Now, is it truly anti-war? No, of course not. Of course not. Trump is not technically anti-war, but he is the closest thing to an anti-war president we have. Rand Paul being perhaps even more so. But name me an anti-war left, 
Name me a candidate on the left. Hillary Clinton, she's advised by neoconservatives, and she voted for Iraq. Joe Biden, he was vice president when Obama destroyed Libya. Who? Kristen Gillenbrand? Beto O'Rourke? The, the, Beto O'Rourke um, brought up the fact that Russia interf ha interfered in our election, attacked our democracy. This is the same absurd propaganda that leads to military conflict and war. Look at what Democrats have done, ladies and gentlemen. If you think I'm crazy, if you've managed to watch 10 minutes in and you say, well, how can you love President Trump and how can you tell people to vote for him and tell people to admire him? Think of what Democrats have done the past two years. They have blamed Russia without evidence. The NSA is moderately confident. Mueller, when he indicted those Russian intelligence officers, where do you think he got the information? He got the information to indict those Russian intelligence officers from CrowdStrike, a third-party tech firm that was out outsourced by Hillary Clinton. Obviously, they gave Clinton exactly what she wanted, just like the Steele dossier. That's why you don't. That's why you have the U.S. government look at servers. You don't allow a Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton to not only purchase a Steele dossier, which James Comey utilized for a specific purpose, obviously to frame Trump. Because if the tables were turned, they would say, "Oh my God! Well, Trump Trump bought the dossier, and he outsourced his he outsourced his own company called Trump Strike to look at RNC servers. This is an obvious conflict of interest." Well, the left doesn't do that. The left engages in this illusion that, that, that a company outsourced by the DNC would give pristine and accurate images and copies of, of servers to the, to the U.S. government. That's absurd. That's stupid. But see, look at what Democrats have done. They've convinced people that Trump is, a, is, is this racist monster when the other day Hillary Clinton said, oh, yeah, all black people look alike. And even the – now they're spinning it to say, though, she was admonishing the, the host. No, the host was embarrassed. And, and you can hear, like, uh, like this, this roar from the crowd of just, you know, they were, they were outraged and shocked. But their queen Hillary was there, so they couldn't really say anything. If it was Trump, oh, my God. Oh, people would be lighting themselves on fire in protest. But it's Hillary Clinton. She gets away with everything. Called black youth super predators. Took prison lobbyist donations. And then on CNN, we have to see. We have to hear how you know Trump is the embodiment of, of racism. Trump is a good president. He's actually turning out to be a great president. If you're too stupid to realize that, you're probably watching MSNBC and CNN and wasting your life. You can disagree with him on a border wall fine you can disagree with him on uh the way he conducts himself his, himself during you know when he's lashing out during tweets and on and, and twitter whatever there's a case to be made that he should kind of tone it down i get that especially if, if, in my book just with women don't lash out with the men it's, it's okay that's actually can be viewed as sexist my 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 thought process on that I think Trump should probably, when it's women, not lash out the way he does. But whatever he does, he, that's just the way he is. So I, I, I have my own critiques. Of, I think he should probably speed up indicting Clinton because she's an actual criminal who transferred. There's no doubt that she transferred top secret intelligence outside of the United States government onto a server. That's not a conspiracy. That's a fact. You want to know how I know? Because even James Comey stated that, and he said, well, she didn't mean to do it. There's no unintentional way to transfer top secret SAP intel from JWIX. If there is, if you have a military background, if you right below, what happens to an average person in the military, a, even a general who transfers top secret intel and SAP intel outside of JWIX or other secure locations onto his, his home laptop? What would happen? What would happen to that person? Well, we know Christian Saucier took a photo in a, in a sub. He was ripped away from his family for a year and then pardoned by Trump. When it's all said and done, Obama's legacy and Trump's legacy will be opposite legacies. People will have a sober look at Obama. The, um, the liberal media will be replaced eventually by a less liberal media. <laughs> Perhaps a more independent-minded, perhaps even more of a libertarian-minded media that isn't so focused on policing thoughts and words. 
The left will police your thoughts, your words, your actions, give Joy Ann Reed a free pass with her homophobic blog posts, give other people a free pass with their racist and sexist blog posts we don't have to get into you know who. And um, when it comes to um, you know Jimmy Kimmel who let's see Jimmy Kimmel who is the moral voice of our nation apparently type in Jimmy Kimmel Jimmy Kimmel Sarah Silverman uh, wore blackface okay all of these liberals all of these liberals Jimmy Kimmel and blackface mocking black athletes so there you go. It's okay for left the left liberals as long as they are circling the wagons. This is not about morality or ethics. They have no anti-war stance. Their anti-war stance, by the way, is hating Israel. That's it. No discussion of Hamas, of course not. No discussion of rockets flying into Israel. No discussion of the irony that they claim to be anti-fascist and anti-Nazi while at the same time wanting the destruction of Israel. How does that work? I am a Jew, an American citizen, um, a Jewish American, and I have and I wrote in my article in the in the in the Jerusalem Post. President Trump's words do not incite hate. Trump had the, had the courage to move the embassy to Jerusalem when even Bernie Sanders voted on that. Yes, Bernie also wanted that to happen. But the left is so full of hatred, they would, in a second, in a heartbeat, want to destroy the Jewish state to fight Nazis. How stupid do you have to be if that makes sense to you? How stupid do you have to be? Yeah, sure, I want a two-state solution. I want uh, Palestinians to have their own state and to have a peaceful, thriving economy. But at the same time, I, don't, I, I understand it's not just one side. That's just one example. That's just one example. Left, the left exists to tell you that they're morally superior to you and any, um, any faults that they had, any, any hypocrisy, any times they're called out, well, you know what? They're still better. It's just like that media personality. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's why Clinton lost, because she called half the country deplorable. Uh, Joe Biden called people thugs, or I forgot what he, you know. They, they think they're better. Meanwhile, President Trump is actually doing things that, are, that, 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 that break the paradigm of war and intervention and regime change and chaos. In two days, ladies and gentlemen, in two days, ladies and gentlemen, in two days, bringing home Americans from Syria and bringing home Americans from Afghanistan. Hopefully tomorrow he's bringing home Americans from Iraq. He's doing what Obama promised to do. He's doing what, and, and, and Obama destroyed Libya in addition to and, and adding more troops to Afghanistan, which is what, what Hillary Clinton said, yeah, we should do that. That happened when Clinton was Secretary of State, the worst Secretary of State. Obama's foreign policy was horrendous. And then the, the, the Iran deal was the issue. We'll never have war with Iran. I don't want war with any country, especially not Iran. But when you allow a country under the guise of a, of a, of a, of a deal to test ballistic missiles, that's pretty stupid. Like over 21 tests were conducted, and that actually didn't break the deal. That's how horrible Clint, uh, Obama was. But, you know, the media thought he was just a genius and brilliant. He is, he is, he is obviously brilliant to become president. All presidents, I think, are, are brilliant in some way. Even dummy Bush, he was able to become president. But they lack wisdom. Obama lacked wisdom. Bush lacked wisdom. Trump has wisdom. Is he, is he nice on Twitter? No, he's not. Does he, have, does, he have, does he possess greater wisdom than Obama? Of course. We can see that in two years. Better economy, better foreign policy. And Obama deported two and a half million people. So shove your um, moral grandstanding up you know where. 
Obama utilized ICE. No, no calls for ending ICE or abolishing ICE. And by the way, you think they're going to abolish ICE? No. You think they're going to implement Medicare for All? No. You think they're $15 minimum wage or green economy? No, 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 no. You've been played as always, but that's okay. For the progressives I'm talking about, people on the left. I'm no longer a progressive, obviously, wearing this. Give me your thoughts below. Trump is the best president of my lifetime. I'll debate anyone on that. He's a much better president than Obama. Um, how can you not say he's a, he's a better? How, how, what is the case to be made that Obama is a better president than Trump? What, because of the media freakout? Because the media is crying and, and they're having a ta temper tantrum for two years nonstop? If the, if, you, if the media use the same logic it uses or lack of logic against Clinton as it uses against Trump, she'd be in San Quentin with her husband. I mean, there's like direct like correlation between money going into the Clinton Foundation and beneficial treatment. Where is that happening with Trump? You can't name an example because money doesn't go into his foundation and so suddenly he, hook, he hooks up people. It doesn't happen. Clinton has a whole list of that. That's just one of many crimes he's committed. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. I love President Trump. He is a great, great president. In two days, bringing home Americans from Syria, Afghanistan presiding over peace between North and South Korea. Just those three things alone, he's better than all the rest. Uh, not to mention a great economy. Hit subscribe right now. Thank you.